Hey on people. Uh, got a few questions on wrongful convictions. So I figured I'd cover that while I'm out here on this nice morning. There's no wind. I don't have to worry about people complaining about the wind. Uh, got my horses in the background. I don't know if you can see the horses or not. You don't see the horses? Let me zoom out of here. And maybe I'll stand on one side so you can see the horses. <laughs> Sometimes they'll snap or do something that's kind of funny and I'll miss it. <laughs> so uh, wrongful convictions. I hear this term a lot, and a lot of people, you know, say, what do you think about that, and isn't the system crooked and broken, and look, wrongful, a lot of the wrongful conviction cases, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, uh, granted, I admit, sometimes, sometimes there's a dirty cop, more times than not, it's a dirty DA and lawyers hiding evidence, uh, and, they don't, and they want their conviction for political reasons, or it's a witch hunt, and they want to go after somebody, but most convictions that you read about in the paper where they go wrongfully convicted, released from jail, he was a poor black man that was convicted. Look, that's all liberal left-wing bullshit propaganda. Here's what a lot of wrongful convictions are. And, you know, you, you can be on the fence on whether or not you agree or disagree, but, I mean, nobody's going to, everybody's not going to agree with me, and that's okay. But my opinion is sometimes a wrongful conviction guy probably deserved to be in jail anyway. Oh, Rick, that's unconstitutional, you jack leg, boot leg, jacked up cop piece of... Look, I'm sorry, okay? When you arrest somebody ten times and you watch them walk, and you watch them create the crime, and you because the, it's too busy, and the crime's not enough, and he just goes on and on, and you arrest a dude, he's got 30 pages of arrest. He's been arrested over a hundred times for assault, rape, kidnapping, uh, uh, you know, unlawful detention. I mean, you just look at all the shit and you're like, holy shit, this freaking predator's still on the street? And then you get a conviction on him for something and later it turns out that DNA cleared him? Look, don't be fooled by this DNA crap, okay? DNA is great and it's wonderful, but when DNA clears somebody, it's not just clear cut. You... So many people are caught into this, this box that if the DNA matches, then he's guilty. And if it doesn't match, then he's innocent. And that's just not true. There's a lot of guilty people that are found not guilty and that are set free. There's a very small percentage of people that are not guilty and that are found guilty. And in that small percentage, a lot of them are guilty of so much more shit and probably guilty of this crime. It's just we can't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. So when somebody's released from prison because of a DNA clearance and we found DNA that didn't belong and that, that for the case, look, I don't agree with DA's hiding evidence. And sometimes DA will hide a third person's DNA and they will just get in court and go, this person's DNA was at the scene. Okay, it was. And he probably did it. And there's probably other evidence. But they're not required to say, we also found four other people's DNA. So the defense has a responsibility to find that and to bring that up in their defense saying, hey, wasn't there four other people's DNA at the thing? Well, yeah, there was. But that DNA can be explained by family members, by uh, the cleaning lady, by the, you know, the electrician, whatever. That DNA. They just cleared some dude because they found a third party DNA on a pair of underwear. So you got a girl wearing underwear that was raped you got the suspect's DNA on the underwear, pubic hairs or some shit on, a, on the underwear. He went to prison, and 20 years later, they found some DNA, and they went back there, and they go, there's a third-party DNA on there. Now, remember, when they find DNA, they're not saying who that DNA is, because you can't match DNA. You can't just run somebody's DNA and say, oh, it's this person, unless everybody's in the DNA system. So we can only run DNA against people in the system that have their DNA in the system for being a convicted child molester or felon, whatever. whatever it was. If it was put in the system for some reason, then we can run it against that and we make it a match. But, hell, 90% of the people are not in the system. If Maybe 95, probably 97% of the people are not in the system. So we're checking a small thing. So when they find DNA in a set of underwear, and they did this case, and they had an expert come in and do this, they found the DNA from the person that shipped the underwear. And, and they proved this by went and buying a brand new pack of the same underwear. And they found DNA in the underwear that was brand new. 
Well, how can that be, Rick? Nobody's worn it yet. Because people handle shit. And when you handle stuff, our technology's gotten to where we pick up every piece of DNA on every touch. It's very easy to have multiple DNAs on areas. So for someone to be cleared because there's other third-party DNA, not just theirs, is ridiculous to me. I mean, the guy's a convicted rapist, he's on parole, he's had four convictions, he was at the scene, his blood was there, and we got DNA from his blood that was there, we got semen DNA because he was there from his semen, and because we find a third party's DNA in the underwear, they're suddenly going to let the guy go loose and there's going to be a big headline. Wrongfully convicted black man, innocent, after 20 years in prison, never did anything wrong because some mean white person planted his DNA. And, and that's the story you'll get. And you, you won't get the rest of the story of his convictions, his past, the other evidence that led him. Nobody is rarely ever, I don't know of any case where a person was convicted solely on DNA. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. You can't just say my DNA was there, therefore I did the crime. You have to put the guy in the area through the cell phone. Was he, was he there? Did his car there? Did a neighbor see him? Did a witness see him? There's all this other corroborating evidence that supports your DA was there. And I remember the, the guy who did it can sit there and go, I want a lawyer. I don't want to say anything. So he doesn't have to defend anything. It's totally on the prosecution, which is a good thing. Government should have a high level. I got no problem with that. But when we go out there, government, and, and try to get these bad people, and we find all this evidence, and we connect all this, and then some dudes let out because of one isolated. We can't, as cops in government, you cannot do things on isolated incident. It has to be totality of circumstances. You can't do things on one isolated thing. I can't convict you. I can't arrest you. I can't charge you. I can't do anything on one isolated thing. I have to have corroborating evidence. And that's a good thing. But you, you shouldn't be able to go free because of an isolated incident. It should be totality. And the, when you see, if I, when I look, 90% of the time I see somebody released for wrongful conviction, you know, if you know anything about the guy of the law, he was in there, he was in, you know, they'll let out little secrets. They won't say he was convicted of freaking 14 other crimes. They won't say he's been in and out of the system since he was a juvenile. They won't say any of that. But through the system, they'll talk about, well, when he was incarcerated at this other prison, he met this guy who was a bad influence. And when he was incarcerated at this prison, he got mixed up with the wrong guys and they were found with drugs in prison. And when he was in this prison, and they'll say all that, but they won't say he was convicted 36 times for rape. And this rape, suddenly he's innocent because they found a third party DNA. And I thought this, this where they went out and, and, and demonstrated this was a brilliant thing, is if you go buy something new anywhere, it's going to have DNA on it. You cannot get anything that's sterile from DNA. I mean... I'm sure in the hospitals, maybe the gloves that you put on, maybe things that are done by machines, that you could probably prove that these new have no DNA because they were produced in a sterile environment. But things like clothes, underwear, it's been handled, it's been packaged, it's been put in a box. Uh, you know, it, it could have been showed, it could have been taken out, it could have been repackaged and taped. Uh, when, when somebody puts it in their drawer, somebody else could do the laundry. Somebody who does the laundry put it in their drawer, now their DNA's on it, and now the person wears it, and now their DNA's on it. And, I mean, there's just, just, there's just all kind of that. I mean, you take your pants down to go to the bathroom, you put your pants on the ground. If somebody's DNA on the ground, now that DNA is on your pants or on your underwear. If it's touching the ground, you rub against the toilet. I mean, there's just a multitude of things on how you can get DNA. And people are running around saying... What about the wrongful convictions? Oh, you cops are all dirty and you set up this poor black man. You, don't be a freaking sheep. Come on, people. I, I, I mean, most of my viewers are pretty smart, but I get a bunch of drive-bys that are like freaking, they just want to argue about stupid shit. I'm like, dude, you, you've lost the ability to critically think and evaluate things. You don't even understand how to go, okay, I'm only getting part of the story from the media, and that's going to be filtered by the government. The government never tells me anything, so that's filtered. And then when I'm reading it, I put it through my own filters on kind of what I want to believe. If I believe everybody's racist and there's a black person involved, therefore it must be racism, then I've got that filter to add. So, I mean, you just lose all credibility. You lose, I mean, science is about more failures than successes because every failure 
means you're one step closer to, to finding the right answer. So, I mean, critical thinking is you have to go, I can't just take what somebody tells me and go, oh, that's absolute, you know. I, I, I don't have to question that. I, I can believe it. I mean, you want to believe it. You may have other experiences that cause you to believe it. You may know other information. But you, you shouldn't just be thinking because a guy's let out of jail and the, and the headline says wrongful conviction release DNA he didn't commit the crime. That's not true. And defense attorneys will always use inflammatory innocent speech and DAs will always use inflammatory guilty speech. So, you know, you gotta, they're both pushing their agenda. They both want to be right. They're both getting paid to represent their side of the justice system. So you're not getting the truth from either one of them. And the media only works for the government, so depending on whose side they're on, you're getting cooperation from a source that was never a reliable source in the first place, because they both have an agenda. That's why this climate change is so sad, because scientists used to be the last great hope for purity. Scientists would never want the wrong information. They would rather fail a hundred times in order to reach the right answer. So it was all about scientific proof. Can I reproduce? Can I show and prove without a doubt that this, can anybody disprove what I'm saying? That's good science. And the criminal justice system, I mean, it's just not science. You got peoples and lawyers and politics and agendas and race and media. And so when you hear the term wrongful conviction, look, there is so much more that you don't know than that comment about wrongfully convicted had to be released because he was innocent. He wasn't. You always see defense attorneys saying my client's innocent when a jury either acquits or lets him go. OJ's lawyers running around, he's innocent. Everybody knows OJ did it. He, he, I mean, shit, the evidence was overwhelming. Only an idiot would think that he didn't do it. And, and cops who were in the investigation and new cops that worked it and knew behind the scenes there was so much more that they couldn't get in the jury because they had the high price attorneys saying no the jury can't hear this no the jury can't hear that we're gonna do this no the jury can't hear this so there was so much that the jury didn't know he would be even more guilty if, so, if people knew it so I mean anybody that believes that OJ is innocent well then you know I can't help you because you absolutely cannot think OJ did it I mean who cares alright he killed him he got away with it. He hired lawyers. But you can't run around. His lawyers are running around saying he's innocent. He wasn't innocent. Not being found guilty by a by jury is not the same as being innocent. A jury saying they're acquitting you is not the same as being innocent. Jury nullification can let you go even if you are guilty. Doesn't mean you're innocent. Okay? I mean, but the crime is this. Did you do it? is yes or no, and then the other minutia, I mean, it just takes time and stuff. So, hopefully, um, I made a little bit clearer about what wrongful conviction means, um, how, how that goes into play. Boys still eating their morning breakfast. There's some hay over there for a little donkey and the cows they were eating too. And uh, we'll end out there. Man, it's a great morning. It's only like 33 out here, but there's no wind. The sun's out. And uh, we're right before this big old, supposedly big winter freeze. It's supposed to get down to 24, I think, tomorrow night or something. So I got the water heaters out. Got to cover the water faucets. Do all the winter. I keep a little checklist of my winter checklist so I don't forget shit. So Because every winter, inevitably, I'm like, shit, I forgot to do that. Or, damn, I meant to do that. And, and it caused me problems. So I finally just made me a little list. <laughs> on a Word document that says winter checklist. So now when a freeze is coming in, I just open up that winter checklist and it says cover faucets. Make sure the heater's on for the horses. Make sure they got water. Make sure the chickens have water. Make sure this is done. Turn on the light on the on the pump so the pump doesn't freeze. So it's got heat in the pump area. So make sure that light's on. So I go through my little checklist. <laughs> and the military checklists are huge. I love checklists. I'm a big checklist fan. But uh, maybe I'll do a video on checklists. All right, we'll end out there. Buddy, Mr. T, you're good boys. Like, dude, we're eating. Get out of here. <laughs>